Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now, roasting a chicken, it's an essential skill for the home cook. But are you intimidated and maybe you're not doing this at home because you're afraid that your roast chicken is gonna turn out like this guy here? Well, today I'm gonna share with you the tricks, the tips, everything you need to make a perfect roast chicken at home and you won't have any dry birds like this. In front of me here, I have, this is about a four pound bird, and this is what is considered a roaster. So there are different kind of classifications of chicken. Starting off on the small end, we have broilers and fryers, and those chickens are typically under three and a half pounds. And the reason for that is because they're smaller, they cook up faster with really high direct heat. So in frying or broiling, you really want a smaller bird, something that's gonna be nice and tender in the end. Um, as you kind of graduate up in size, um, you get into kind of more cooking techniques that might take a little bit longer. This is a roaster, as I said before, and a roaster has to be above three and a half pounds. So anywhere from three and a half pounds up to five pounds. And then from there, when you get past five pounds, the chicken itself, it's been raised um, to a older age. Um, so it technically has more flavor. It might have a little bit more um, fibers to it. And that's really why you wanna roast that bird or you wanna cook it in a way, you could even stew it. Um, anything that gets higher up in that weight category. Now, I'm using on the smaller end of the roasting birds just because to me, this is a perfect size for a family or if it was just two people that you were cooking for, this would be plenty to have leftovers for the next day. Now, one important thing, this is probably the first tip that I want to um, tell you about, is making sure that when you're roasting a chicken, that you bring it out of the refrigerator in advance of putting it into the oven. So this chicken has been out of the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Now, another tip here, guys, if you want super crispy skin on your roast chicken, what you can do is you can leave it in your refrigerator overnight without any packaging. So take it out of the packaging and leave it uncovered in your refrigerator. And what it does is it dries out the skin and that will give you an extra crispy uh, bird in the end. So what I'm gonna start with first is making a salt and pepper mixture. Now, coarse kosher salt, I'm gonna just eyeball this really, maybe two heaping tablespoons, I'm just using two large pinches, and one of pepper. And I'm gonna mix this together and I'm gonna start with the cavity of the bird. Now, again, another tip here, when you bring your um, chicken home from the supermarket or the butcher, you wanna make sure that you take it out of the packaging. If there are any innards or the neck, which are inside in the cavity usually, you wanna remove those. You can use those for a wonderful gravy or a stock. Save all of those pieces because they really do make a great chicken stock. Now I'm going to season the cavity with salt and pepper. And you wanna be pretty liberal here because all of this seasoning has to penetrate into the bird. You really wanna make sure that in the end, your bird is nice and flavorful inside and out. So a little bit of salt and pepper. And then for the inside of the bird, I'm gonna use some aromatics. Now, there are two reasons why I like to use aromatics. One, flavor, and two, for steam, to create some nice juiciness um, in the bird in the end. So I like to use lemon, um, a little bit of garlic. So I'm gonna use half of a lemon, half of a garlic, um, a head of garlic. And I'm just gonna cut that garlic in half. That's so beautiful. A few sprigs of rosemary and a few sprigs of thyme. Now, you can certainly switch this up in any way that you see fit. Stuff the cavity with half of a lemon and half of a garlic clove. Now, this original recipe um, that you can find on MarthaStewart.com is intended for two chickens. So save these other halves for that other one, um, or you could certainly use them in any other way. So I'm gonna just take the herbs and I'm going to put them into the cavity. Now we're going to begin the trussing process. And trussing, it's a fancy word. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're tucking and tying those two things. So take the wing tips of your bird and you're going to rotate them underneath the breast back here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help those wing tips. It's gonna prevent them from burning actually. And it's also going to provide a really nice shape again for your chicken. To secure the legs, I'm just gonna take a little bit of um, kitchen twine here and I'm going to tie the legs together. Now, 
if you didn't have kitchen twine, which is actually something <clears throat> that people have asked about, they don't really keep this on hand, uh, you could use, if you see here, the skin on the side of the bird, the skin along the cavity, you can cut a little slice in the skin and you can take the drumstick here and actually poke it through and truss the chicken in a way without any twine. But I always keep butcher's twine on hand and all I do simply is just take the twine, tuck it underneath the drumsticks, the ends of the drumsticks, and I bring it together and tie it into a knot. Now, a lot of other people, they like to tie the bird kind of around the breast meat, they come up here, and for me, what that does in the end is it creates unsightly marks on the skin. So when you go to carve this or present it and you wanna remove that twine, sometimes it pulls off the skin and it's just not something that I like. So for me, just a simple tie here is really all you need to do. Make sure you preheat your oven to 475 degrees. Now for this size bird, it's a small bird, uh, we like to roast at a high temperature for a short period of time. Now, that's gonna give you wonderful crisp skin and it will also get your dinner on the table faster. But the most important rule, guys, is that you don't want to overcook your bird. That is key in having roast chicken success. No matter the temperature, if you had a recipe that called for a 350 degree oven, but for a longer time, if you overcook the bird, it's gonna be dry in the end. So really invest in one of those great digital thermometers um, and that will tell you when your bird is done. So on top of this, I'm going to take two tablespoons of unsalted butter that's been softened and I'm gonna use my hands here. It's the best tool you have to coat the top and the sides of the bird with butter. Now, if you didn't want to use butter, you could certainly use oil here as well. You just want some sort of fat that's going to give great color and a wonderful kind of crispness to the skin in the end. Smear this all around. All right, so the butter is nicely kind of smeared all over the chicken. And I'm just gonna give my hands a little bit of a wash before I season the bird. Just season the bird up. Now, you can just use salt if you want. I'm using salt and pepper because I made my little mixture in advance. Um, but again, if you wanted to use a wonderful spice blend, if you are a fan of that, you could certainly add that here as well. So season it up nicely. You can even season the bottom of the bird. And so now I'm gonna transfer this chicken right to I'm using a cast iron skillet today that has a rack in the bottom of it, but if you were roasting two of these, you could certainly use a large roasting pan. I think the most important thing here is that you want to find a vessel that has a rack in it because what that's going to do is it's gonna elevate the bird up. It's gonna promote airflow, hot air circulating around the bird, which will help the bird to cook nice and evenly. And you'll also get nice crispy skin around the edges. So this is going into my preheated 475 degree oven and this will take about 45 minutes to an hour. You want to check the bird at about 45 minutes in the thickest part of the thigh and we often say what you know we tell you that but what does that actually mean? Well this is the drumstick. The thigh is underneath the drumstick here and it has a bone running through it and what you want to do is you want to use one of these digital thermometers and you're going to insert it right here into the thigh avoiding bone and it should be around 165 degrees now i also like to temp the breast meat as well and i like to clock that at about 150 50 to 155 degrees because remember guys as this cools when it comes out of the oven it's going to continue to cook that temperature is going to rise uh, so it's a good way to keep the breast meat from overcooking now if you find that your chickens cook unevenly dark meat versus white meat one of the tips here that you could use is to position the chicken in the oven where the legs the dark meat that usually takes longer to cook is facing the back of the oven because typically that's where the heat is coming from. So it will encourage the dark meat to cook at a little bit of a faster rate. So into the oven. All right, so here's the big reveal. Our chicken has been out of the oven. It took about 50 minutes. And when it comes out of the oven, you wanna tent it with a little bit of aluminum foil um, and let it rest for about 10 to 20 minutes. Now, when you tent with foil, a good tip here, don't kind of secure the foil down so that there's no steam that escapes. Otherwise, the skin might get a little soggy, so leave a little bit of room for airflow. 
and now we're ready to carve this bird up. So I have two knives here that I like to use when carving a chicken. This is a boning knife. It is a long uh, slender knife that is usually flexible, the blade of the knife, which is really great. And then this is kind of an oversized carving knife. This would be perfect for a bigger bird like a turkey, um, but you can also use it here for um, a chicken. So those are really two great tools to be using. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to remove the twine. So again, this is part of the reason why I like to just tie the legs so that it doesn't pull the skin away from the bird. Take the twine off. And then the first part of the chicken that I like to carve or remove are the thighs and the drumstick. So take your knife and the natural seam here between the drumstick and the breast, you're just going to slice through the skin. And at this point, you should be able to pull the drumstick and the thigh away from the breast. And if you need to kind of cut through a little bit more, you can. But really what you're looking to do is to naturally separate the joints of the bones. So this is actually where you want to now cut right in between this joint. So whenever you're carving, um, even if you were doing this and you wanted, to, if you had a raw chicken and you were cutting this into pieces for another cooking method, you don't really need to cut through meat. You really just need to cut in between joints. Now, to separate the drumsticks from the thigh, there is a line of fat that goes kind of in this direction between the drumstick and the thigh. And what you're gonna do, and you can kind of use um, your knife to give you an opening, is to find that joint in between the drumstick and the thigh. So pull them away from each other, exposing the joint, and that's now where you're going to cut into two nice, beautiful pieces. Now, I have a wonderful platter here. If you're going to be serving this up to your guests, it's a nice, um, thing to heat up your platter in a very low oven so it's nice and warm and it keeps the meat at a good temperature. So I'm just gonna do this, repeat the process with the other side. Now, there are two different ways in which you can carve up the breast and the wings. The way that I like to do it is I like to keep the bone on because I think it keeps all of the moisture really in the meat itself. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife, I might actually switch to this bigger guy here, and glide it through the rib bones, the rib cage, basically. And you should be able to then pull this whole portion away. And I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna throw it in a bowl over here. And this you can save, you guys, if you wanted to throw this in a bag in your freezer, you could save that to make a really delicious uh, chicken stock. What I'm gonna do is take my bigger knife here and I'm going to cut all the way through the breastbone. It's actually called the keel bone, but for this presentation, again, since I like to keep it on the bone, and it should be fairly easy after your chicken has been roasted, all you have to do is exert a little bit of pressure and it should cut right through the breastbone. Remove any of that backbone if you have it. And now I like to just cut this beautiful breast with the wing um, attached in half. Now you could do it this way or you can cut it on a slight bias which is kind of nice in terms of presentation and also um, kind of affording everybody an even portion. And there you have a really beautiful way to present your roast chicken. So right on the platter, maybe we'll move this guy over here. And what I like to do whenever I'm roasting anything and presenting it at the table, I like to garnish with whatever the herbs or aromatics that I've used. So I'm gonna garnish with a little bit of rosemary and you can just maybe break off a few pieces and a little bit of thyme. I like to use a little bit of lemon juice over the top just for some brightness. It kind of cuts through all of the richness of the um, roasted bird and a little bit of salt over the top. And there you go. You have a super impressive, really moist and juicy roast chicken and a kitchen conundrum solved. Now, if you guys have any kitchen conundrums that you need answers to, please reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you guys. Enjoy. And as always guys, click like and subscribe.